Part 3 starts with Jim, planning to take Zoe to a place called the Eye, a holographic simulator containing Earth's entire history. Once there, Zoe wants to see the place she was born. Jim commands the simulator to show the place, and after that, they also watch roller coasters as per Zoe's demand. Just then, a meteor explodes in a nearby forest, causing an electromagnetic pulse burst. It immediately emits a shockwave, causing some minor damage to the compound. Because of the EMP burst, Terra Nova's electricity goes offline. Jim and Zoe are stuck inside the eye when the EMP cuts the room's power. Since the room has electronic doors, the pair is stuck in it. After inspecting the room, Jim finds a small escape route under the simulator, through which Zoe can fit. He tells her to go through the route, which leads to the door outside and open the door's handle manually. In their camp, one of the Sixers informs Mira about the energy failure of Terra Nova. She takes this as an opportunity and orders her men to get ready to attack the colony. Meanwhile, Zoe makes her way through the tunnel under the simulator and arrives outside the door and manually unlocks it. Once outside, Jim learns about the situation and orders one of the security members to take Zoe home. Next, Mira and her Sixers bring an Empirosaur to Terra Nova's fence, hoping it can distract them. Taylor and Jim make the dinosaur go away by throwing fire arrows in front of the gate. Taylor notices the dinosaur has something in his back, so he realizes that it's just a distraction to get Mira's mysterious box. Both of them go to the medical lab, where the box is kept, only to find that Carter and two other Sixers are stealing it. After a fight with them, Carter manages to run away with the box. Jim follows him but Carter quickly escapes the colony and finally gives the box to Mira. Mira and Carter then meet a man named Lucas in the jungle to give him the box. Lucas opens the box, which displays some digital graphics that resemble those on the rocks near the waterfall. One fine day, Jim and Taylor go fishing by sea. Jim hooks a large swordfish, which nearly pulls him over the cliff. At Terra Nova, Elizabeth tells Maddie that one of Maddie's favorite geologists, Dr. Ken Horton, will be returning to the colony later. That afternoon, after spending months in the jungle doing research and gathering wildlife specimens, elated, Maddie wants to get an autograph. The doctor arrives and then goes off with Elizabeth and Maddie to get himself checked out medically. Meanwhile, Boylan tells Josh that Mira wants the task to be performed that she previously demanded of him. Mira wants Josh to steal a rare medication out of his mother's lab to help cure a sickness that is occurring at the Sixers camp. Meanwhile, Dr. Horton passes his medical testing, but refuses to have a brain scan as he immediately wants to get back to his work. Maddie joins him as an assistant and gets a tour of his lab and newly acquired specimens. She requests the doctor to sign her copy of his book and he gladly signs it. Back at home, Maddie notices that Horton's signature on her book does not match his signature on a letter he wrote to Maddie when she was a child. The following day, Maddie asks some questions to Horton relating to the letter, but he doesn't recall it. He instead asks to see the letter so that he can get a copy and keep it as a souvenir. Maddie, however, finds it weird. Next, Josh demands proof that Mira can bring Kara to Terra Nova so Boylan takes him to the Sixers camp. Mira initially is unwilling to provide for Josh's request, but eventually provides holographic communication with Kara. Josh is satisfied and agrees to steal the medicine for her. Back by the sea, Jim and Taylor come across a recently abandoned campfire, which Taylor knows to be from Curran, the soldier they exiled for murder. Taylor wants Jim to head back to the colony while he hunts down Curran. At the colony, Dr. Horton shows Maddie how he plans to save decomposing Applefield using some green beetles he brought from the field trip. During their conversation, Maddie notices that the doctor continues to have difficulty recalling his past. Back at home, Josh steals his mother's card so that Boylan can replicate it. After Boylan replicates it, Josh breaks into the lab and attempts to use the card to gain access to the medicine cabinet, but the card fails. He pulls out a pistol given to him by Boylan and fires at the cabinet. Josh is pushed backward, slamming into the wall behind him, but successfully opening the cabinet in the process. He then steals all of the indicated medicine. In the meantime, Taylor finds Curran with a badly injured leg in the jungle. Taylor mixes up something for Curran's infected leg, but doesn't tell Curran why he is helping him. At Horton's lab, a curious Maddie sneaks in, only to find her letter burned and in the trash. Just then, Horton returns to the lab, stops using his supporting cane, and walks around the lab without limping. Maddie quickly hides under a table. Dr. Horton looks through the bag of the trash containing the pieces of the letter, and leaves the lab again, regaining his cane and his limp. Later, Maddie conceives that someone is impersonating Horton, and that they surgically altered their face before coming to Terra Nova. She then realizes she should be able to get the real Horton's DNA from the saliva residue on the envelope that the real doctor had licked, 
and sent it to her years ago that she still had and compare it to the fake Horton's DNA. After assisting Dr. Horton briefly, she grabs his drinking cup and sneaks off to compare the DNA at the lab. But both the DNA matches in the system. However, Dr. Horton is seen secretly watching Maddie compare the DNA. Josh goes to Boylan's bar and tells Boylan that his father had been asking a lot of questions about the break-in at the lab. Boylan decides to frame one of his less desirable customers for the incident. Next, the man is brought in and is high on a particular drug in question. But Jim senses something isn't right. Back in the jungle, Curran is healed with Taylor's mixture. The commander then tells Curran that for him to redeem himself, he must find the Sixers and pretend to join them, so he can determine who the spy is at Terra Nova that is giving the Sixers information and supplies. Meanwhile, Maddie continues her investigation by visiting the Eye. Using the information there, she deduces that the real doctor must have been killed by his former assistant, who then altered his appearance to look like Dr. Horton. Horton then enters the room and finds out what Maddie has been researching. Thankfully, before the Horton imposter can do anything vile to Maddie, another person enters the room, letting Maddie escape. She then decides to go pick up her sister, Zoe, from school, only to find out that the impersonator has already taken her. Maddie finds Zoe and the fake Horton in the apple orchard. The impersonator lets Zoe go, but before she can run off, Maddie tells her little sister to inform their father that she'll be late in cooking the asparagus. The impersonator finally reveals that he was Horton's assistant, Andrew Fickett. He explains that the real Dr. Horton was a liar and took credit for others' research. He then ties her to a tree and reveals a jar containing a lethal spider. But before the spider can get to Maddie, Jim arrives and knocks Fickett down. It turns out that Jim had been alerted when Zoe informed him about Maddie's asparagus, which was their code for danger. Safe at home, the rest of the family talks about Maddie's good intuition. Just then, Josh walks in and tells them the whole story of his involvement with Boylan and the Sixers, and his plan to get Kara to Terra Nova. Jim immediately confronts Boylan, who reveals that Mira does indeed have a way to communicate with 2149 without the time portal being open, but he swears doesn't know how she communicates. Jim brings this news to Taylor, who isn't that surprised. Taylor theorizes that the only one who could be responsible for creating the technology to communicate with 2149 would be his son, Lucas, who has been missing from the colony for a long time. It's the same Lucas, who Mira met in the jungle to give the mysterious box. At the Sixers camp, Mira watches a dragonfly that has just landed on her hand after spying through Terra Nova. In the colony, Boylan has been arrested after Josh confessed to his business involvement with the Sixers. In a cell, Taylor interrogates him, demanding to know what else he knows or has told the Sixers. Meanwhile, Josh pleads to his father to check on Boylan. In the cell, Jim finds an unconscious Boylan who tells Jim to go to the Pilgrim's Tree, the largest banyan tree in Terra Nova, and dig under it to find the truth. Jim then searches on a digital map to locate the tree with Malcolm's help and heads out to take a look. After arriving at the tree, Jim begins digging and discovers the skeletal remains of a human. He then talks about it to Elizabeth, who notes that the body is missing its right arm and that the person might have been shot. Jim doesn't want Taylor to know of it yet, as he thinks the commander might have something to do with it. Out in the jungle, a security team including Mark is delivering supplies to an outpost, but they are ambushed by the Sixers and confiscated of all the supplies. Meanwhile, Maddie is directing the practice for a play to be performed in the upcoming Harvest Festival. Zoe is portraying Commander Taylor in the play, which is a story about the history of Terra Nova. While practicing on the stage, the earlier seen dragonfly flies over them, and a nearby soldier successfully knocks it down. Maddie is surprised to find the dragonfly carrying a microchip attached to it. Upon further investigation, Malcolm concludes that the dragonfly was being used like a carrier pigeon to send messages back and forth between the Sixers and their spy within the colony. Next, Mark and his team arrive back at the colony and inform Taylor about the ambush. Since Boylan is still in the cell, they deduce that he couldn't be the spy who tipped Mira off regarding the time and location of the supply mission. Therefore, Boylan gets released from the cell. In her lab, Elizabeth finds that the person whose remains were found did not come through any known pilgrimage. Learning this, Jim goes to Boylan's bar to question him regarding the body. Boylan initially denies having a connection with it, but gives in and reveals that Taylor had asked him to help bury the body a few years ago. Meanwhile, Malcolm discovers Elizabeth working on the body and asks why he doesn't know about it. He then goes off to retrieve Taylor. Jim lies that he found the body after receiving an anonymous tip. Surprisingly, Taylor brushes it off, saying it is most likely the body of a Sixer, making Jim and Elizabeth even more suspicious. Next, Malcolm tells Taylor that he has discovered how the Sixers and Spy got the Dragonfly to do their work. He explains that the Dragonfly was following a particular frequency that it was attracted to. 
The Sixers knew about this frequency, so they took it as an opportunity. Pleased with the news, Taylor decides to release the dragonfly to track the source of the sound, so that it can lead to their spy. Malcolm then releases the dragonfly from its cage, and he and Taylor follow it around the colony, finally tracking it to Jim's house. At the Harvest Festival, Jim and Elizabeth watch Zoe's play, and they notice that one of the characters in the play, General Richard Philbrick, Taylor's commanding officer, only has one arm. But before the couple can check on this newly found information, Taylor arrives at the scene and arrests Jim for being the Sixers' spy. Next, Jim is put in a cell. Taylor walks in and tells him that he'll let him go if Jim stops his investigation of the body found under the pilgrim's tree. As a cop, Jim refuses and instead, asks Taylor if he killed General Philbrick. Taylor pauses for a while, and finally confesses to killing the general. But he only did it so, in self-defense. As Taylor explains the past events, the show goes back to a flashback. Those implying Philbrick and Lucas, and later the Sixers, were trying to get a time portal created that could work in both directions. Meaning, that people and things could not only come to Terra Nova but they could also go out. Their motive was to extract all of Terra Nova's natural resources, and send them to 2149 Earth. His son Lucas was a genius so he was on the verge of finding his way to create the returning portal. But soon enough, the commander discovered his son's work and destroyed it because he didn't want Terra Nova to end up like 2149 in the future. Furious, Lucas ran away from the colony, and when Taylor finally tracked him, he also saw General Philbrick arriving from the future. The general was there to relieve Taylor of command but when Taylor refused, the general pulled his pistol, ready to kill Taylor. In self-defense, Taylor fired a shot, killing the general instantly. Since Taylor couldn't kill his own son, he let him flee into the jungle. After Taylor finishes his story, he and Jim agree to not let anyone take Terra Nova from them and forever protect the colony and its people. The commander then releases Jim from the cell, knowing he's not the Sixers spy. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and hit a like to help the channel out. Don't forget to watch part 4. Thanks for watching.